and welcome back for another episode of the cash flow agent show you know kai i'm super super excited to have you on the interview today how are you great to be here doing well awesome i'm looking forward to uh, you know have a really really good conversation with you because i know that you know you has grown so much personally and especially your production team has grown so so big you know within the company so i really want to bring you back on today for another episode just to give um, people an update on 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 how big your team has grown and then for the people that have not know you yet you know they will know who kai is you know how big is his team how many production that he does and especially what can kai do to help you know the new agent you know the next team leader you know the next brokers who is struggling out there right how come how can they get, you know, what they 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 um, they receive from you to become, you know, more successful or to get out of uh, of where they are, you know, the, the struggling that they are, and then you know they're gonna get to the next level. So, okay, super excited to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you, Hui. It's great, uh, and I think that you know have been in real estate for quite some time. I'm always appreciate opportunity to be able to give back to share some of the things that going well for me, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, specifically, so the team have been doing awesome. Uh, we have been doubling our business every year. Uh, currently, we have 17 agents. And, 17. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. And uh, last year, we are uh, privileged to earn the Triple Diamond Award from the company, which is the highest production award. Right? Wow. Um, and uh, and uh, we did about 150 deals, uh, 40, 42, 45 million give or take last year. And this year, I think we are on track to to hopefully double that, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, slow down the number because you just blow my mind right there. Slow down the number. What is your production number? Uh, about forty-two to forty-five millions in sales. Forty-five million dollar in sale volume. Yes. yes. In a year. Yes, in a year. Holy yes. moly! Give me some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> Before you, uh, before you get to even all that, right, you know, let's backtrack a little bit, you know, um, and could you tell us a little story about, you know, uh, who you are and, you know, like why all of a sudden you get, you know, you go full time into real estate, right? It's not an easy right, thing to do. Right. So about give or take six years ago, I was still in the corporate world, right? I started out in real estate uh, part time, actually. Uh, but quickly, in about three months, by beginning of 2018, I realized that if I really want to be up there, want to produce as well as some of the rock star in the real estate world, I have to commit 100% because part-time is just so limited. I cannot go all in. Um, and uh, funny enough, back then, one of my mindset is, hey, if I really want to do something well, I want to talk to people who have done it for one or two years. People have done it for three to five years. And how do they make at least 100K in the business? Because I think when you are full time in something and you're making less than 100K, that means something's missing. So mm -hmm. I don't want that. I want to, hey, repeat the success from the best out there. And I talk to those people and they give me advice on, hey, here's how you get started as an independent agent, solo agent. And back then, I think um, joining the company, uh, it was a privilege that I was able to partner with some of the great successful people in the business and they are willing to open their book and help me learn along the way. Now, however, after I go full time, um, I quickly able to have the success that I didn't think that I would get. Right. Uh, I was able to cap within 10 months in the first year. Ooh, um, and so with our company, that means you are at 100 percent, 100 percent commission for that year. So that's awesome. Right. I didn't think I could do that in the first year. Nobody can. Nobody thinks. Yeah. And then in the second year, I do that in six months. So I said, yes, I'm onto something, right? Yep. Um, now, on to the third year, I also realized something. Along the way, I met with people, people who, hey, want to starting out real estate part time, people who dabble into the real estate industry. And I realized one thing, they all need a little bit guidance at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, they need a little bit more than just a one off mentor. That's why I started the CTP Realty Group sales team, because it's important that I provide some sort of foundation, a system structure in play along with guidance so I can get some of these people kickstart their career. Wow, that is amazing. Um, I'm going to dive in so many good stuff that you just mentioned in your uh, in, in your conversation. Number one, you know, um, 
you say people in our company in exp they open their book and help you they're not afraid of you because you um, because you're gonna eventually compete with them could you talk more about that you know like how 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 am i able to open my book and how is amanda is able to open you know their book and then show you everything without without any holding back yeah totally i mean at first you know i i approached real estate because i have uh, i personally invest in real estate so i'm an investor at the beginning right and then however it took me a while to switch over the mindset of hey how can i go from being an investor myself and also helping all the real, uh, real estate investor out there right and i think at the beginning seeing you are the cash flow agent you focus your niche on investment property i was so appreciated you actually showed me hey kai here's some of the thing how you run the number hey here's how you actually can advise people on how to look for the deals and, and then switching by setting to, hey, how can I actually assist them along the way in the process? And, and that's awesome because um, uh, that's how I learn, right? By pick, tapping into the resource and learn. And the same thing with Jeff and Amanda. At the beginning, when I start getting some traction within my first year, toward the end, I actually lucky enough to get plugged into some of the more high-end deals, more luxuries. And mm -hmm. at that time, Amanda was a luxury expert. And, but she, she opened my book. I'm like, hey, you know, do you should I split the deal 50-50 with you because I understand the money is? She's like, no, no, let me just help you out. I will show you how to do it, you know, and show me, hey, here's some of the resource. She doesn't want to do it for me, but she's going to show me how to do it. And yeah. I appreciate that because I want to learn. I want to grow. So I can need someone to share, show me the way, basically. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm not lazy. I'm hardworking. I want to do it. So I just don't know how, right? And yeah. that is the exact resource that I, I need to grow. Man, that's amazing. And and by helping you, um, you know, later on, we can talk about our revenue share structure. But, you know, by helping you indirectly, you know, Amanda, she will eventually get paid. Right. And, and right. And it, right. So you get bonuses back, from uh, the company. Yes. Yep. And it just come back to the same principle of, you know, if you can help more people, if you can figure out a way to help people with scale and then you you eventually will make no more money or right? money. It just become the byproduct of the people you help. So exactly, it just uh, come back to the same pr principle, and then we we roll forward like that. Right, we're building a community. Yep, exactly. You got it. And then you mentioned your cap. You know, um, so you cap a, at hundred percent. How important is it for you, especially for a new agent? You know, to get the hundred percent commission back. Uh, I still... think that was super important because <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, we want to be rewarded for doing something right. And if I put myself out there and want to earn more, well, that's one way for me to earn more is when I limited my, my fixed commission split to, to 80, 20 for a while. And then when we cap, then that's when we fully enjoy the award, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. And, and, and it's not like when you cap, you know, all the support over here stop, like when you cap, you no, know, people just support it's you and way. enter you the same way. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that. And, um, and I think that's one thing I, I really appreciate being with a company that focus on agents, you know, they don't, they don't want to make the most our money out of the agents. They just want to make enough for the margins. As long uh -huh. as the model support it, then they're done. They're not greedy. They don't just say, hey, keep giving me more, giving me more. No, they yeah. award you. And then on my third year, I realized there's something even better than capping, being an icon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And the amazing thing about being an icon agent with a company is, hey, we are the top 3% in the company. And not only you get your cap, no, you, you cap at 100%, but when you hit icon, the company gives you the whole cap back. That's yeah. awesome. And then in form of stock, and the stock is valuable, and they, they're growing well. Yeah, so. Yep, yep. It's yeah, it's, um, it surprised me too. You know, it's, it sounds really, really far, especially for new agent um, to be able to achieve icon status. You know, but um, for those who are watching the video, you are looking at two live example right here, right? As, especially Kai, you cap in your your first year, and then the second year, you know, you cap faster than that, and then I would say, you know, by the second year or third year, you're able to hit icon status already. Correct. Right. Yeah, and you you are actually a brand new licensee. It's not like you in real estate since forever. Right. No, I'm totally new to sell because before that, <laughs> I worked for corporate. I was a financial analyst, so I deal oh, with yeah. numbers all day long. I don't do sell. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So again, you know, congratulations to uh, hitting the icon status. This is the top, you know, I would say 5% of the agent that was able to be achieved with an EXP. And then with that, you know, all the cap that you pay into the company, you get it back in form of stock, which is even better because our stock is growing. 
at the speed of the internet. That's right. Very yep. exciting. Yeah, so I, I kind of see your 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 growth path now. You know, you start out brand new, and then you work really hard. You cap, and then you hit icon. And I think this is the next step that kind of freaked everybody out, me included. Is actually starting a team, right? And you mentioned that you um, you want to support and you want to mentor the new agent, right? But can you dive? Can you dig into it a little more? Like, can you tell like um, like hey, let's say for me example, or for anybody 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 out there that they are a really good solo agent already. What is some of the pros and cons of forming a team? You know, should they do that? You know, for like a successful solo agent, should they go ahead and keep on becoming a really good solo agent? Or should they, you know, thinking about forming a production team just like yourself? Oh, um, a lot. I have received this question quite often, actually, from several successful people in the industry. And I think all it comes down to, it depends. <laughs> Yeah. It's a funny answer to give, right? But it yeah, right. And the reason it depends is because it's where your end goal is. Are you stopping doing real estate after this year? Are you stopping doing real estate in five years? Are you stopping doing real estate in 10 years? Mm -hmm. And when you do stop, right, I like to ask for the question, hey, what your lifestyle look like? Do you like to still hands-on involved in real estate? Or do you more like, hey, you like to transfer your skill set into the next set of, you know, brand new agents? Yeah. Well, and, and if your answer is, hey, I love to create a community of agents, I like to support them, I like to create them at the same time, it financially makes sense for me to, to be keep doing that for the business as well, then I always say, hey, dive into the teams. And once you got, when you make that decision of diving into the team, then you decided which team structures work for you. Because mm. there's so many different ways to form the team, and I can quickly go over, you know, the pro and cons of a few of them. So that way we can take a quick look. Um, but the structure of the team will be also depending on your, your style of leadership, your, uh, what you're hoping to achieve within the process of running the teams, right? And then what kind of team member you would like to attract to your teams. Um, now, however, if your first very first answer is, hey, Kai, I'm going to quit real estate in a year. Hey, I'm going to quit real estate in two years. Or hey, I just love showing houses. I love talking to people continuously. I want to make as much money as I can. I have 100% of my time for real estate. Then I would say, stay solo agent. <laughs> or just add more resource along the way that can help you maximize your time. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yep. Yeah. Because the te team leader is not for everyone. Create a team is also not for everyone. Um, so we can dig down into more if we have more time, but that's a whole new hour of conversation. Hey, if you stay solo, what are some of the things you can do, right? Now, let's just go back to the team. Uh, I have been having the CTP Realty Group team for almost, I mean, over three years now. And I have to say every year we make some changes and revisions to the team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I I'm get to the point where I'm pretty happy with what we have, right? And just because it's right for me doesn't mean it's right for everyone else. So I would say some of the people in the audience right now may listen to my structure and say, oh, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to run with it. Some may say, you know what? I'm going to twist it a little bit to make it more what I'm looking for. So what exactly is some of the team out there? Um, uh, one of the most traditional way to start a sell team in real estate you're mm -hmm. starting with the most important team member, which is your admin support, ah. your personal assistant. Why is that important? Because in real estate, there's something called money generating activities. Yep. And as a solo agent for a while, you start running into the issue where you're spending your time doing some of the things that may not directly help improving your revenue. Yep. And if that's the case, you need support so your admin support is the most important first team member not buyer agent not seller agent admin support yep i mean support for paperwork right 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 and then from there you can scale into a tc transaction coordinator or you can also outsource the tc work as well and just skip right to the first buyer agent mm -hmm. And I think that will be the best order. It doesn't matter what your team structure is. That's the best order that anyone should get started. Wow, amazing. Yeah, people think about team 
um, you know, they get really complicated, you know, but I, I feel very confident that uh, and then very easy to start a team. Now, after I listen to you is to like, hey, when you get really, really busy, you know, hire a transaction coordinator, hire an admin and see how long you can run with that. Right. And then That's if right. you have more lead, keep coming in and then maybe correct with me what I'm wrong. You know, if you have more lead that you can handle, maybe that's that's when the time you're going to bring in a buyer agent. That's right. Yeah. Or sometimes it depending on how you work your lead, right? Because when we talk about this generation, I run into this topic all the time with team members. Everyone have their own strength and weakness. And yeah. if your strength is tackling your school, your sphere of influence, then do that. But if your strength is, hey, cold calling, open house, door knocking, then do that. Or if your strength is, super social like on video you like to love to look at beautiful houses and share with some of the people looking along the way then focus on that as well now as a team leader team leader doesn't have to be good at all of that mm. team leaders need to be aware that there are some of those lead generation tool out there and so your first team member may not come to you because you have so many extra lead to give them maybe just one or two okay. however they are very passionate about learning. And you just happen to be there, be their accountability partner, be their mentor, be their guidance, and help them kick start it. So I would say, don't have to wait till you are overly floating with lead, just ah. when you're really busy. Okay, okay, well, that, that's a really good tip. And um, since you mentioned uh, lead generation, if you don't mind, I just gonna quickly dive in into it. Since this is like the most, you know, number one search, you know, on Google, on social media, like all the new real estate agent, they get their license. And then the next question is like, hey, you know, how do I generate lead? How do I get lead? So if you can just, you know, kind of, you know, share with uh, with everybody, your audience, kind of your journey of lead generation. Hey, like, what do you do when you first get your license? And then especially your second year, uh, what kind of improvement that you make? And now as a team leader, you know, what do you do now? What do you do now to lead generate? Uh, do you sure. generate for the team or do you, you know, or do you like hold your team accountable for lead generation? Go ahead. Um, I would say starting out my first year, um, I was pretty blessed because um, the, my number one lead generating activity that year is for my sphere of influence. Yeah. And um, and at first, uh, the first two, three months, it was a little bit slower because I have I guess, how do you put it at the beginning, seeing I switching from a non-sales role into sales role, mm -hmm. I have a hard time talking to people about using my service. Yeah. I, I keep tapping this mindset that, hey, you know, if I'm good, people should see it and people should go to me, right? Or if they know me, if they know that I'm in real estate, they should hire me as their agent. Well, oftentimes they don't know. Well, they don't even know that I'm in real estate. And then when I they finally know I'm real estate, sometimes they forget. So then from a couple of coaching and mentoring that I talk to top producers, they recommend me to have regularly real estate conversation. And that's my number one tip. Doesn't matter what sphere you're working at, what kind of lead generation you're doing, you've got to have your real estate conversation every single day. Every single and, day, every single week. Okay. And, and, and it's as simple as you just reminding people that you're in real estate. Those conversations doesn't mean have to be specifically about day buying house. The conversation just all about some way, somehow you remind a person you talk to you in real estate. Uh, because guess what? My number one metrics this day mm -hmm. is that your income in real estate is directly proportional to the number that know you are in real estate. Yep. So my number one question is how many people know that you're in real estate? Yeah, so let's say you and me, we go to a party. Uh, we don't know each other. If you don't mind to do a little role play, you know, like yeah. how do you let me aware that you're in real estate? Just say that, you know, we kind of know each other. We are friend of a friend of a friend and then we all go to a party. Like how, how do I, how do you approach me and how do you let me know that Kai is in real estate? And, you know, I kind of <laughs> know you, but I don't really know what you're doing. Go ahead. Right, right, right. So <laughs> my, my first go-to question is always, Hey, blah, blah, blah. how are you? How's it going? Great, great. Doing good, man. Good to see you at a party. Yeah. So, hey, what do you do? Um, I, I fix computer. I do IT for Slumber J. Oh, that's cool. And how's that going? Um, You know, it's going okay. The oil industry, they are they happy up and down, you know, so I always looking 
you know, for, you know, opportunity, always keep my, my eyes and ears open. Oh, that's great. So have you doubled into real estate yet? I thought about it, you know, it seemed kind of risky in my opinion, you know, I don't know with all the interest rate going crazy. I don't know if do, do people make money in real estate? I have no idea, dude. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. If you have, find the right opportunity, you would. And, uh, you know, as a real estate agent, I actually run into this question every day. And funny enough, every day we will have different answers <laughs> because sometimes depending on what you're looking for, um, you may find different answers. Some people say, hey, if I can make an extra $100 a month from the house, I'm good. Some people say, hey, I need to make at least $500 more every month from the house before I'm even consider real estate, right? So my question to you would be, what would you consider be good from real estate? Mm, I see. Uh, maybe, you know, just buy a big house, you know, maybe get it on somebody else, pay for it, you know, when I'm not there. If I can get, get a free bitch house, you know, I'm cool with that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Someone paying for your vacation home. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, Hui, um, who do you know that wants to buy or sell real estate in the next six months or so? Uh, I don't know anybody. Maybe me? Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe, that's funny enough. Yeah, if, if you can hey. find me a deal, you know, I, I, uh, I have a good job. You know, they pay me good money. And, um, you know, I, I think I can get a good, um, I think I can get a good loan out of it. By the way, do you, do you know any loan officer? Yeah, I think that's another interesting take because, you know, how you find the money for your deal may determine if it's a good real estate deal or not. So, you know what? Let's chat some more. It seems like a longer conversation than a few minutes. So let me see. What's your phone number? Let me text you my contact real quick and let's schedule a time for coffee next week. Yeah, sure. Just hit me up on coffee. I'm around Cypress. Perfect. Let's do that. Dude, that was good. <laughs> yeah. I hope you all catch that. See, so I don't know him and, you know, I hate, I, I really like your question. Like, who do you know that, that might buy or sell real estate um, in, 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 in the next six months, right? It totally took the pressure off me because, you know, like, hey, you know, guys asking for somebody, you know, if I know somebody and I tell him, if I know, and then, you know, I raise my hand, that question totally mm -hmm. took my pressure off, you know, so right. that he doesn't come across like salesy at all. No, that's what I try to do, right? Over time, I say, hey, I, as long as I say something to remind a person I'm talking to that I'm in real estate, that's always the matter. It's not about I'm begging them to buy something from me. No, not at all. I'm just here to offer value. <laughs> that's really good. Okay, I'm totally lost track. Where are we at? <laughs> Where are we <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that, that's what, so backtrack to my first year, even uh -huh. though most people in my sphere of fluent, but within the first couple of months, I have to get really good at how can I share with other people what I'm doing? And how do I brag about myself without coming off as, you know, arrogant or snobby, right? Yeah. And and that is over time, as simple as you just tell, like what I did earlier in the conversation, all I do is start talking about, hey, I'm asked right into the real estate topic. And then after that, I kind of mentioned, hey, I'm also in real estate. That's what I'm seeing, right? So, and then that's it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. But now, so within the first six months, I start having my closing. I think my first closing come in month four, actually, uh, being in the business. And then after that, thing kind of stack up a little bit more. So within the first 10 months, I was able to cap. Now, all from a sphere of influence, that means I have to be keep, keep keeping up with my real estate presence. Now, along the time, I also learned how to do open house. And I would say open house is a very powerful tool if you learn how to do it right. And number one tip that I give to most people on how to do open house, uh, it's not about the house itself. That's a given. You got to know some sort of basic information about the house, why is a good house to buy, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. However, the most important thing is how do you bring traffic to your open house? Yeah. And a lot of people kind of skip that step. <laughs> <laughs> they think that open house happened and then people just come. Not all the time. Yeah, right? you have to generate. Right, right, right. And then, you know, gen podcasting interest, you know, posting on social media, running flyer, that's one way. But the second way, direct way that works for every single house is talk to at least 10 neighbors in each side of the house. Yeah. Yep. 10 to the left, 10 to the right. Very basic. And if you can do that every single open house, you're going to generate some sort of interest right away. Yep, and plus people they know that you you are the one who hustle hustling in that uh, neighborhood, you know, during August in 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 Houston, which is super super hot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. 
and then going from that um, and then on your second year could you tell me like uh, do you like kind of graduated from open house and then moving forward to some some other sort of lead generation yeah so my second year i focus on two new ways to make sure that i generate the first one is the cold market ah. i start investing company dollar right advertising dollar i okay. check out facebook ad google ad Uh, Zillow ad, Realtor.com, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many of these list source out there. Um, some of them you pay up front for the marketing dollar and then you get a lead, you convert it. Some of them, they have pay at closing, meaning you only need to pay referral fee. And looking back, I would say that some of those referral source is a better way for new agents to get started because you have less risk up front, like dollar commitment. You only pay when you get paid which is easier on the pocket at the beginning. I see, I see. Yeah. So I, I kind of see your, 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 you kind of graduate your, from, you know, like a trading, in, instead of trading time for money, now you have the money, you kind of put it backward, you know, like, hey, now I have money, but I don't have a, a lot of time. I'm gonna spend some of the money that I earn back into the business. So that way I can generate even more lead and that's just how I can grow. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, but then it's also forced me to learn a new skill. Yeah. Um, two new skills, actually. The first one is how to convert those cold leads, online leads, to become clients. Mm -hmm. The second skill is how to use CIM effectively. Yeah. Because yeah. my first year, I only talked to the people I know, and they are pretty much, you know, within 10, 20 people, then it's very easy to manage. I didn't have to use the, the, the CIM system too much. But the second year, I, I'm forced to learn because when you talk to 50, 100 people, you start losing track, yeah. right? Who you talk to, where they at, kind of thing. And and it's lucky enough that we have a, a, a good tool, right? KV Core, and yeah. we were able to set up a lot of automation as well, which save a lot of time. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, and for those that is watching this video and it's not yet with EXP Realty, you know, KV Core is the number one lead generation software out there on the market. And all of the EXP agent, you know, we get access to KV Core at no cost. Yep. Yeah, maybe call the cham, you know, the CAM that work is the one who use it. So we happen to have the best of the best KV core. And, you know, if, if it worked for the triple diamond team, you know, that make it to 45 million in, 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 in the, in, in the year, you know, maybe it's going to work for you and me too, right? The person who's watching the video. Now, another thing I would add is, uh, after toward the end of the second year, going to the third year, um, I was reminded by one of the top producer in the industry that you got to know your database. And by saying that doesn't mean just a new lead coming in and how you structure them in the system, but it's a lot have to do with your current and past client. Mm. And because just because someone buy house with you one doesn't mean they automatically come back and do it again. Make yeah. sure that you give them some love along the way. Yeah. Yep. Also, just um, just quickly touch on follow up real quick, right? Follow up yeah. is one of the, the key skill, right? Not only that you need to be able to generate lead, but you know you need to be able to stay in front of them, following up with them, and then keep reminding them about real estate. Um, so could you also kind of slow back and kind of give share with the audience, you know, kind of your journey on what do you do to follow up with people? Would just be on your first year? on your second year and now that you have a team with thousands and thousands of leads coming in, how did you manage and how do you follow up with all your leads? Um, the, the two most important follow up for every single, well, actually three, but I will touch on the first two. It, because with any CIM out there, I'm pretty confident that you can set up some sort of campaign for mm -hmm. your lead. So with KV Corp specifically, we were able to set up a series of questions that we would like to touch every single lead within the first two months. Mm. And we spread it out over 14, 15 touch. Um, and so each of the question is designed so that way we can ask open-ended question. So that way the lead still know that we care for them and we want to be part of their home buying journeys. Right. So that's the first part. The second thing is listing alert. If yeah. any lead that come into my database that doesn't have a listing alert, I know I'm missing something. So that's always number one thing I check. Hey, if I couldn't think about them that this week, the system's still gonna be sending them houses that they like to look at. Yeah. That's important, right? And then the last thing is market report. Because mm. some people, they start a home buying journey, but that's just not because they think about buying how they buy right away. Sometimes yeah. it takes out three, six months, four months. Sometimes I look a year in advance, right? 
but you want to have the market report turn in so that way whatever area they're looking at they know that hey this is how the pricing look like if the price keep going up it may be motivate them to hey maybe move a little bit quicker don't yeah. wait too long and then house price keep out ahead right yeah so those three things are very important the campaign the listing alert and the market report and all of these three items, you know, you, you you work them directly within KV Core and you don't use any other third party software. No, I don't. Yep. I only use KV Core. Yes. Super simple. Super simple. Yes. You already have that included. You know, I, I, this is what I love about your team. You know, you, you, you don't complicate thing. Everything is just so simple, but yes, so effective, right? And you use the stuff that you already have, right? Why pay for, uh, you know, something more way why you already have it? In Woodhead, uh, well, Woodhead. and keep in mind, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy either. And nothing is easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> However, some well, of this stuff very easy to do, but also easy not to do. Yeah. And the the difference that moves the needle is if you committed to doing them. Absolutely. And that's what we try to do in our sales team here is to yeah. remind people of the basic, the foundations. Yeah. So um. So speaking uh, about that, you know, um, could you talk about some of the struggle of the difficulty that you have as the, you know, as your first year in real estate, you know, and then how people can avoid your mistake, you know, your third year in real estate, you know, when you get ready to, you know, I know that at one point you, you, you are really good solo agent, um, talk about your struggle and, and how you solve that. And then especially now when you run a team, what is your biggest issue right now and how are you solving it? Okay. So I guess initially it's all always about how to maintain the pipeline in your business. Mm -hmm. A lot of time when we first started, it doesn't solo or not. We don't think about real estate as a pipeline business. Yeah. We are transactional based, yeah. but it's not like that. Real estate, you only as good as your last deal that you close. And if you don't have a pipeline, if you don't know if you're going to have some closing coming in the next three to six months, you are dry. And if you're dry, you get frustrated and then you're going to focus on the wrong things. Right. Yeah. So that's what I quickly learned after the first year is, OK, I need to start thinking out loud. That's why earlier, one of my question always, hey, who do you know that want to buy or sell real estate in the next six to 12 months? I want to express the people that I'm talking to to think for me right in the future that's <laughs> um, really good. Not right now, but in the future. Right. Yeah. Um, and so when I start doing that, I see that is actually improving my business as a solo agent. However, I always run into the thing where I don't know how to leverage, right? And leverage is a big key in real estate investment because a lot of time, why pay all cash when you can use the same amount of money and buy three houses, right? Exactly. And all it comes down to is leverage, leverage properly, right? It's very important. And so what I learned is uh, I want to start sharing with everyone how I fully leverage my time. And I do that by applying more into the CIM, right? If anything can be automatic, I will do that. So that way I don't have to do it again. And then I start leveraging people. That's when we have the support system. That's when we have the assistant, the transaction coordinator, right? Very important. And then showing agent, right? Oh, that's a very important. Now, yeah. when I started the, uh, the sell team and we have start having some agent joining us, I'm start sharing with them as well. So a lot of time on anything that high level, I can help support them. But if anything that they need to be hands-on learning as well, then they can take care of those. Uh, and in, in turn, I guess one of the solution that the team helped me at the time is solving my, solving my time issues, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I cannot be in three different places at one, now I can. Yeah. So that way I don't have to let go of any transaction. I can still be involved with all transactions, but not directly. Awesome. So you start, you know, leverage out the moment you you see that you're getting busy. So that way you don't yeah. miss out on new business. Right. Yeah, and so also after my second year, I no longer work on Sunday. Ah, I see that. So you, you know, you block that time. Perfect. Right. 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 Yep. I, and, I work very hard from Monday to Saturday, from mm -hmm. early to late night, whatever, but not Sunday. Yep. Yep. And I think this is a mistake that I see most of uh, new real estate agents. They, they often they struggle to. You know they try to number one they set money and you know they try to do everything by themselves and they lack on you know money generating activity and it's all the struggle between you know generating the lead and then you service the lead and then you, you see your business fall behind and then you generate the lead and then you know you service the lead and then your business fall behind again so this is just like a yo-yo moment that i see you know on on all the new real estate agent they they struggle 
right? Yeah, and right. Uh, well, kudos to you. You know, you figured that out in the very early beginning. I I personally haven't seen, you know, a half producing agent that work totally by themselves, right? They either have a TC, an admin, you know, a really good assistant or somebody, you know, like a Batman and Robin thing, right? It's kind of like to, to at least to, to get, kind of get things moving. So for all the new real estate agent who is, or, you know, if you're solo, you know, start thinking about, you know, hiring and building, you know, your team and, you know, just get a really good assistant so that way you can, uh, you know, just, you can scale your business just like high, you know, to the next level. Yeah. That's right. So moving to your team, Kai, so what is the struggle that you see that is the team? You know, like I know that you, you are a friend and you actually um, um, hang out with a lot of other team leaders as well. What is the struggle that uh, is, a, is the real estate team having right now? You know, let's say for you and how you are solving that, that pro problem. Well, interesting enough, um, because uh, this year we also hit uh, the top 50 team in Texas uh, <laughs> for the brokerage. And uh, we got invited to a mastermind a couple of weeks ago in Austin. And uh, so e everyone coming from all over the place, different cities and whatnot. The one thing in common for all of us is we are high producers, right? We are top 50 in the company and uh, we, we, we share our circle. Yeah. And um, a lot of things that come up for team leader, myself included, is how do we fully leverage our time and tools in play to help support the agent but still stay profitable, right? Mm. Because if you're just spending a bunch of money to make some money, anyone can do that. Yeah. However, how do you spend enough but it still makes sense and effective and beneficial to the, to the team member? That's important. And also the number change over time as well, because let's say if you have enough resources and time for 10 agents, and then you leverage some, you move it to 15 agents. But how do you make sure that the same thing can still happen when you hit 20, 25, 30 agents? Yeah. Right? And then et cetera, how do you get to 50 agents and yep. still able to help and support them the same way? Yep. Um, and as a human being, it, it's impossible because we don't have 24 seven a day. So mm -hmm. we got to have system in place. Yeah. And how do we do that? Well, a couple of things we come up with. All the new agents that joining the team, they all have two issues or two most asked questions. Yep. Number one, you touch on it. How to find the next client, right? How do you lead generate? Mm -hmm. But the second question is, how can I be a good enough agent that I'm comfortable with all my contracts and transactions? Mm. And what we learn is we, we kind of forgot this and the, 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 the managing broker kind of remind us to say, hey, within not not mention any other state, but within the state of Texas, we have 12, 14 different managing broker that's on call every day at the hour. And or we are a phone call away or message away. And then they also have weekly training on contract class every Thursday. Yeah. And they say, hey, why don't you combine your effort, right? You have your own team meeting, your sales team meetings, but also send the agent to the weekly classes where we actually have a managing broker who their very um, uh, their very expertise is in compliance and contract and legal document. They will share those training and teaching those. So mm -hmm. you leverage your time to not having to go through contract training, but more like, hey, team member, how do we apply this to this situation in the, in, in the real transaction? Yep. Then if we combine this effort, we save time and we can reach more people at once. Yep. Yeah. And that's a very cool reminder because sometimes we forget about it. We try to teach everything as a team leader, but to all the team leader out there, you don't have to. There are certain tools that can be leveraged, but you need to shy where, you, you, where you're most effective. Awesome. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. And uh, this is actually one of my obs observations. I see a lot of successful successful team within, you know, my group and within EXP Realty. They all have the same thing in common, right? Whatever they, they can successfully leverage out, they will, right? And you just mentioned that, you know, we have so many layers of support. The company as a whole, we have 80 hours of live training. You know, we have the big Asian meeting. We have the level up series. And then the state broker, you know, we have contract training for you, for your team leader. You can send people, anybody can send uh, agent to, to that, um, to that uh, training, right? One, one, one o'clock every Thursday. 
and you know it just took a lot of stuff off your shoulder as a team leader a team leader so you can effectively leading people instead of managing people instead of you know um try and go and see how you show people how to write a contract you know you can totally leverage that off and you know it's it's gonna allow you to you know have more productive time and meaningful time with your with, with your teammate that's right yeah and uh, another idea that's very helpful for um for team leaders is once your team members start reaching the moment you're seeing the changes from five to ten people most of them is manageable uh with most of the team structures it works but when it gets beyond 10 people then you need to evaluate um, or not you need to but one thing that i find helpful for me is i start evaluating the team cultures mm. and a lot of time uh, people are, are different by nature different personality different interests different focus right so it may be important to have a team cultures that can be a little bit more diverse and that's what i'm seeing in my team Mm -hmm. um, some of the thing we do is very easy for the whole team to do together, but some activity is easier to break it down in smaller group. And there are smaller group within the team yeah. that share the same interest. And mm -hmm. as team leader, if we can facilitate more of those uh, small groups, if you may, uh, the bonding is stronger, uh, the efficiency is there, and people have fun doing real estate. Very important. Yep, I, I kind of see that, you know, so that way they kind of have like a friend in real estate, if you will. Yeah. Everything does not 100% need to go to you or to me. Uh, a lot of time, you know, new agent, they can answer, they, they can give out better answer, you know, because for new agent, <laughs> because they, they in that space versus you and me, we've been doing this thing for a long time. So our answer might not be as good as somebody who just joined the industry and who just figured that out like last week. Right. right. So by connecting them together. I see that, you know, for your team, the efficiency just go up like so much better. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I can say the same thing, but, you know, if other people say the same thing, it's all of a sudden it's better. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. Hey, um, I, I just want to touch on this one last thing when it comes to team. You know, I see the, um, you know, the all traditional team model, you know, they kind of build a follower, if you will, right? You know, hey, I'm going to try to get this agent to follow me forever, right? They're going to work for me. They're going to be loyal with me. You know, my goal is to try to make them stick with me forever. But I see something very different in, 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 your, in your leadership, in your team. You actually encourage people, you know, to go out and then, you know, uh, form their own team, if you will, right? Which I, I never seen anything like that before. Right? Why, why would you encourage your, your team member to go out and form your team and then you even help them? Could, could you speak about that? Yes, because... <clears throat> From day one, or not day one, from my solo agent days, when I started the CTP Realty Group sales team, I only have one mission in mind is, hey, how can I have provide a system so that way all these agents, they can build a strong foundation for themselves in the business. Now, because I recognize EXP model early on that they are, encourage us to form a community, an organization, if you may, that can help support each other without having to worry about competitions. Mm -hmm. So I say, hey, if I have that, then I really have nothing to hold me back of trying to train independent leaders within my own group. And along the way, we have the team structure, team split, just so that way I can stay profitable as I was training them and pulling love into how they grow in real estate. However, when they fully be able to done them, but done it by themselves, it's a lot better if they operate it as their own independent unit. And with that in mind, I have been, you know, pushing that ideas, if you may, from early on with every single agent I talk to, I say, hey, my number one goal is not to you know, take credit for everything you do or keeping you with me forever. My number one goal is for you to be as an uh, independent operator as quickly as we can. And when you're ready, you let me know if you want to be independent or if you want to build your own team even, then I will open my team book and say, hey, here's how I do it. Here's how I do my team. You can do the same if you like. Yep. So you're essentially training the next leader, you know, in, in, in for, for your organization. And you're essentially training the next team leader that can basically, um, you know, take over the world and, and do the job even better than you and me. Right. And in the last three years, I would say we have got at least three people that have done that successfully. So they, 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 they would graduate, if you may, from, from the sales team. They still yeah. would stay within the same brokerage, 
We yeah. still have great relationship, right? They call me for situational support all the time because sometimes we just need to bounce idea real quick uh, on what's going on with our own business. Uh, and, and we still do that over time, yeah. but they no longer will belong to the sales team, if you may. Man, amazing. Uh, kudos for you for, for, for doing that, right? Over here at my group, especially your team, your group, you know, we, we train leader instead of follower. And, and I can see that clearly, like by the quality of people who come into your group and then who come out, they basically kind of transform themselves, you know, personal development, leadership development, sales development. They, they just become a really, really different person and, and agent, you know, after spending a couple of months, a couple, of, you know, a year or two with you. So right. kudos and I think, that. um, uh, the very important takeaway is I was able to do that is because the company model allowed me to do that, meaning they will allow me on the allow all this independent agent within the group to share part of their revenue with me. And mm -hmm. the revenue come from the company dollar, not even coming from their, 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 their share. And, yep. and so that encourage growth all together. And if I can set, spend less time and just helping them out the same way and get reward from the company dollar, that's awesome because that's keep bonding us together as a big organization that's growing instead of competing and then shrinking, you know? Yep. Yep. I, I love that, you know, totally growth mindset, you know, they have your support, they have my support, they have Jeff and, and, and Amanda support. And really, you know, anybody would in ESB Realty because at the end of the day, we are all shareholder of the company. So if I can just help an agent, if you can just help an agent out there, you know, with or even without in the company, you know, you know that all the goodness is going to come back later. So it's totally, right. you know, chance people mindset from like, hey, how do I kill that Asian on the other side to like, hey, how can I collaborate with him? How can I make it a win-win deal for everybody on the table? Absolutely, man. Okay, well, we're getting uh, close to the end of the presentation. I have two questions to ask you. One is going to be easy. One is going to be hard. So, you know, think hard. Don't ask me the hard question. <laughs> Second question. <laughs> right. Number one, easy question. What do you do for fun, dude? I love spending time with my daughter. Okay. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, since I have the two daughters, uh, one is seven, one is three now, uh, most of the free time I have, I want to spend some time with them. Uh, not just all fun stuff. Sometimes it's like, hey, how can I pass on my legacies? Yeah, uh, because part of having real estate as my identity is that over time, I know that I'm building something for generational wealth. Mm -hmm. How can I pass on my investment properties? How can I pass on the revenue share from the company? How can I train? So that way, they may not necessarily training them to be a real estate agent, but to have the, the growth mindset. The mindset. And yep. The only way for me to do that is spend more time with them. Okay. So, well, it, it kind of lead perfectly to my second question. So the, the, the second question and the last question I'm gonna, I, I ask everybody on the interview um, is, is that, you know, if you cannot pass a, a penny to your kid, right? You cannot pass the money. Well, you can only allow to pass your daughter one advice, only one advice. What would that be? <laughs> Get your real estate license when you turn 18. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny experience <laughs> no just kidding but uh, I think the number one thing that I'm, I'm still haven't been able to give it to the kid yet but what I really want to give them is the mindset that there's no limit you can earn anything that you want to get and as long as you want it enough keep dreaming keep wanting there's no limit you can do it yep all right, kid, you know, I hope you watch this recording and then, you know, you're going to go and make daddy proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, man, um, Kai, thank you so much for your time. You know, I know you be, uh, I know you're super busy. You're running a team and uh, really appreciate your time. You know, in, in the last 50 minutes, you deliver so many val valuable content, you know, to the audience. And I know that from what, what, what you say, somebody is going to click and somebody is going to make good out of it. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, of course. If, if, if people who are watching this video, they want to reach out to you, they want to earn a chance to partner up with you, uh, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Um, the best way is to text me at my phone number, 832-964-5948. Okay. 832-964-5948. Okay. Or if you try to track me, follow me on social media, it will be Kytran Real Estate. Hang on one second. Let me put on the banner. Kai Tran Real Estate is your Instagram? Uh, yeah, it's it pretty much any, anything that you can find online right now. Kai Tran Real Estate on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Thread, Twitter. Yeah. 
Uh, what is your number? Uh, what is your number again? Uh, 832-964-5948. 832-964-5948. 832-964-5948. Uh, yeah, 5948. Let me, 5948. Let me show you the score card at the bottom. Okay, does that look correct? Can I try to do this thing? 832. Yep, that's correct. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I, I will make sure I have that on recording. And uh, and Kai, thank you. And, uh, you know, wish you all the success you have and more. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.